Hey kids, it's JJ. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm stuck in a hotel room and I need to burn some time. So what I figured I would do is walk through how I configure my quadcopter with an Omnibus F3 on Betaflight, the latest and greatest Betaflight. Um, if you don't already have Betaflight, go into your, open up your Chrome web browser and then go into your app store and type in Betaflight and then make sure you attach that application to your browser and then it'll open up just like this. Um, pretty straightforward. Basically, I, 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 I'll, I'm gonna go over this reasonably quick. There's a zillion videos out there. This is just how I set up my gear. Um, my, I use Omnibus F3s on 99% of everything I do from my drones to my full-size race quads to my micro brushed quads to my micro brushless quads. So the Omnibus F3 is my, my baby. Um, but this also works for pretty much any flight controller. The only difference is how you connect it to Betaflight. Some, some uh, flight controllers take different drivers, um, but since I only use Omnibus F3 and F4s mostly, uh, this is basically how you do it. So we're gonna start from scratch with this thing. I'm going to, I have my USB port plugged into my flight controller and I'm gonna plug my cable into the computer. Now, uh, you'll see up here, it went to COM10. Uh, that is good. If yours doesn't, if yours stays on default COM3 or you don't see anything happen or down here in your screen, it says uh, looking for device driver and it only says manual selection. Uh, that's okay. What you want to do is you want to close out beta flight, leave your con your copter connected, and then download Impulse RC Driver Fixer. And I will put a link to that page in the description of this video. Leave your quad plugged in, run the Driver Fixer app. It should find it, and bada bing, you're, once it installs, you're good. Then disconnect your quad, and then reconnect your quad, and it should come up with a comm. Your comm might not be 10, your comm might be 4,000, whatever. Um, I've had them COM3, COM12, it's just every chopper's different. Um, so we're gonna start from the, the basics here. Firmware flasher, so you've plugged in your quad, it's blinking, you go down to firmware flasher, click on that. Very important, make sure you pick the right target. When you hear people talk about targets, that is the type of board that you're using. In this case, the last thing I flashed actually was an SP Racing F3, and um, that is all good. So we, if you flash the wrong target, what will happen is it will soft brick your controller. If that, and that's not the end of the world, but if that happens, you'll have to hold down your boot button on your particular flight controller, plug it into the computer, and then hard flash it, okay? If that happens to you, let me know. Maybe I can help you out. I've done it a thousand times. Um, so pick the right target. In this case, good old fashioned Omnibus. Not an F4 in this case. Um, and then usually you just want to pick the latest and greatest version of software. For the Omnibus F3 and F4, just leave all these just off. You don't have to piss around with any of this. It will automatically do a full chip erase. You do not need to mess with that. Go down to here and hit load firmware online. Wait a second. And then hit flash firmware. And you will see it go erasing. After it erases, it'll flash. When it gets to about halfway here, you'll see it say verify. <laughs> Boom. And you're done. And the controller will reboot. Um, now, usually what I do with this, a lot of people will reboot it right away. They'll unplug the chopper and they'll plug it back in. I don't do that. I just connect right away. And you'll see all this jazz up here. And then I hit reset settings. I actually hit reset settings a couple of times. Then I unplug my chopper and then I plug it back in. Blank, and there you go. Okay, I reconnect. Now, the first thing that you really wanna do with this guy is enable expert mode. Click that and you'll get more gear down here. Always keep it on expert mode. It's just, it, it, you're not really being an expert. It's just helpful. 
Calibrate accelerometer, we'll come back to that later. We've already reset it. Never even mess around with backup or restore. They're a waste of time, unless uh, they've changed something recently. So for Omnibus F3, go down to ports. USB virtual COM port. This is the port that communicates with your computer. Never ever take this off. If you take this off and then you hit save and reboot, you will not be able to connect to your controller again. So then you'll have to hold down the boot button and go through all this again. So always leave the virtual COM port alone. Now, if you wire up your Omnibus to 99% of the time, the drawings that are out there, the electrical drawings, when you wire your S, I use S bus on everything on my receiver. When you wire your S bus into the UART or the terminals on the board, that is usually UART three. So to put, click that to serial and you're done. That's all you've got to do for your ports tab. Hit save and reboot. It'll do its thing. Sometimes it reconnects automatically, sometimes it doesn't. Not sure why. Um, so the ports is done. Let's go down to configuration. I'll walk through these. Most of us run Quad X. Um, I do the Y4 quite a bit. I've built a bunch of those, which is down here. Um, you got A tail, V tail, bicopter. You got all sorts of crazy things. Most of the time, you're doing a Quad X, okay? Motor order, one, two, three, and four. That's important, we'll come into that later. And this is the forward direction of the bird. Depending on what uh, protocol your ESC support, you're going to pick one of these. Now, if you've got D-Shot, you got 32-bit enabled ESCs or electronic speed controllers, you can try D-Shot 1200. I have never tried it in my life, I have no clue, and I'm not gonna sit here and do a tutorial on something and mislead you. So. I run everything except for one quad. I run everything on DSHOT 600. So you might be on PWM if you're running Simon K. Um, you're either usually running one shot 125, multi shot, or DSHOT 600. If you're not sure, I mean, the Omnibus F3 and F4, and pretty much every flight controller you buy now will run DSHOT protocol. That's not a big deal. It's really in the ESCs that you got to look at it and be concerned, if you will. So if there's any clue, uh, you know, research your ESC. Everybody runs different ESCs. Um, everything I run runs DSHOT 600 out of the box. I won't buy anything different. So click on that. This is, again, I'm not saying this is the right or wrong way to do this. This is how I do this, okay? So I enable motor stop. This is actually a, uh, uh, micro brush list that we're setting up here, but I set all my stuff up pretty much the same. Basically, if you leave this off, when you arm your quadcopter, the rotors will spin or the motors will spin. Um, I don't necessarily like that. I like it to spin only in air mode or when it's armed in air mode. So I put motor stop on. So when this thing's armed, it'll beep. That's it. It's done. Um, motor PWM, yeah, you almost never mess with this. These we usually leave alone unless you're dealing with really tiny quads. Sometimes you have to bring this number up. Um, on Omnibus F3s, I usually run an 8.8 kilohertz. The gyro update and the PID loop frequency. Usually running them the same is kind of pointless because uh, your PID can usually never run as fast as your gyro anyway, but that's just how I do it. Now, um, your board sensor alignment. If you have had to mount your flight controller sideways in the board, um, or however you want to put it, if you had to flip it upside down for some reason or put it on its edge for some reason, you adjust that here. Usually, yaw is the only one you ever mess with. Okay, yaw is the rotational value. Say, for instance, you're doing a flight controller and the uh, USB connector sticks out of the back. That's usually a pain in the ass, and usually you want the flight controller USB to be on the side. So you would rotate it 90 degrees to the right, would be 90 degrees positive. If you rotated it to the left 90 degrees, so the port is sticking out the left side, that would be negative 90. I know a lot of people uh, that do reviews on this will say, oh, put in 270 degrees if you do a three quarter rotation. That's kind of dumb. Just go negative 90 or 90 or 180. You don't have to add them all up. Betaflight will recognize negative values. So if I rotated it 90 degrees to the left, going counterclockwise, 
that's what it would look like. You can put in 270, positive. Um, but I think negative 90 makes you think a little bit less. That's just what I do. So my board's in normal. Um, I'll show you how to check that in a minute. If you need to trim your quad, usually you only do this in micro quads, like you might be flying indoors or something, because outside you don't notice a little drift usually. Um, if you notice, you put this thing, you're hovering it in your living room and it starts going to the right, rolling to the right, you might want to increment this in negative values by two. That's usually what I do with micros. Um, if you start, that would be, if it's rolling to the right, negative numbers will pitch it to the left. If you're rolling to the left, go positive goes to the right. Same thing with accelerometer positive and negative pitch trim. If you are drifting forward, you can do a negative two. We'll, and I use it in little doses until it just finally levels out. Um, usually though for outdoor quads, I don't even mess with this. I just leave it at zero. Everybody's happy. Barometer, which is detecting your altitude. If you're running a, a, a Omnibus F3 full-size board, you probably have a barometer. Um, and I actually use these on my drone builds when I have GPS, and that's for iNav. Uh, just for standard old racing quads or 3D and stuff like that, usually you don't enable barometer. You can, but everything that you enable makes your CPU load go up. So make sure you think about that. Always watch this. You usually don't want your CPU load to be above 50%. Usually 30 or 40 is best. Um, you can turn on and off your mag if it has a built-in compass. Uh, you don't want to ever have a built-in compass on a uh, flight controller, period. If you're only ever in your whole life going to fly in acro flight mode, then you can turn off your accelerometer and get your some more CPU space. Uh, I don't recommend this because angle mode is usually a nice safe hazard to have, even for those of us that most of the time fly in acro. It's nice to be able to just flip this guy into uh, angle mode to save you. So you can turn this off if you want. Eh, I don't. Um, what else can I talk about here? If you want to name your craft, this only is useful really if you're running an on-screen display or OSD. Um, if you're going to be doing FPV, a lot of times I'll put in uh, RotoGeek. Or, and that, that way it'll show up in your OSD, and I'll show you that later. We'll go ahead and just put that in there for now. Uh, camera. If you know the angle of your camera, and I always guess, I usually fly at about 30, 35% angle, 30, 30, 35 degree angle. I'll put in 30 here. I'll explain why later, okay? So, you don't have to put anything in here. But if your angle on your quadcopter is tilted up, 45 degrees, you're doing a balls out racing quad, uh, put a 45 in here. If it's pointing up like mine, 30, 35 degrees, put whatever in. Or don't put anything at all, but I'll explain where this comes in later. PPM, this is very important. This is your receiver protocol. Now, like I said before in the ports tab up here, I put everything in as SBUS, not PPM. That's just, I use Radio Link and uh, I love SBUS. So very important, go down here, Hit um, serial base receiver. Notice uh, spectrum satellite, S bus, blah, 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 blah. Um, I've only ever used S bus and PWM and PPM, so I don't know any other ones. Um, and then it automatically defaults to the spectrum 1024. I use, again, S bus. Make sure you do this or you will get no communication on your, um, on your transmitter. So that's important. Let's see, RSSI, I do not use. Um, RSSI is basically telemetry shooting back your signal strength of your radio and, and other information back to your transmitter. I do not use this. If you uh, want to enable this, you can. It will come up on your OSD, um, but you'll have to research it because I don't use it. Uh, 3D ESC motors, for those of you that don't know, when you fly in 3D with a quadcopter, those of us that fly normal quads, your throttle position is all the way down for neutral. With a 3D quadcopter, the throttle position uh, for neutral is actually in the center. So both your sticks would be centered. And if you pull down on your throttle, your motors go in reverse. And if you push up, they go forward. And then you use special props 
and then you can literally flip upside down, fly upside down, do all this crazy 3D stuff, which I do not do, but that's if you had an ESC uh, with 3D uh, ESCs. Uh, I probably just said that wrong, sorry. Anyway, most of us won't use this. GPS, uh, you're never gonna use this in beta flight. If you do, God help you. You only use that in iNav. Um, so, other features, pay attention to this. In-flight acceleration calibration, I never do this. Servo tilt, that's if you're using a gimbal or other similar things. Soft serial port, I do not use. Sonar, I do not use, that's a drone function. Telemetry, like I said, I do not use. LED strip. I do use on some things. I will not be covering LED strip in this video, but if you have any questions on it, please let me know. I use it all the time on drones. Um, display, OLED, which stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. I do use this on most of my drones. If I do an iNav overview, I will go over that, but for beta flight, most people don't use it. Black box configurator. Black box is basically in-flight data recording. This is very useful if you are um, if you are trying to troubleshoot things, detect vibrations. Your quadcopter is doing some weird shit. Uh, you want to have a black box recording on this. Uh, yeah, I usually only have this turned on when I first build the quad, and if something funky happens, I'll record the black box. This particular flight controller doesn't even have uh, data flash in it, so I can't even use it because it's a little mini one anyway. Um, so I'm going to turn that guy off. Channel forwarding. You know, we can get in black box later. Joshua Bardwell and a bunch of other guys have gone over black box far more in depth than I would ever use it, so look at some of their stuff. Channel forwarding. You can actually have your... Uh, channels forward through spare pins on the flight controller. So say you have a flight controller with six outputs. I'm sorry, inputs. Oh, I'm sorry, outputs. Um, and let's say you want to channel one signal or even channel three, whatever, your throttle signal to come forward to a servo. You could actually have that channel forwarding go to another pin, if that makes sense. Uh, I would never use this in beta flight. This is again, you might for certain things, but this is more of a drone thing. Transponder, race transponder. This is for those guys that race against each other that have uh, lap timers, uh, uh, lap eyes. Um, I do not use those. All I do is crash with buddies. I don't race. Air mode, I always have on. This is an acquired taste. Air mode, what this is, is this gets you, keeps you at a minimum throttle, which is not quite enough to take off. Um, so it's not a hover throttle, it's just a little bit below. But what it enables you to do is do those fast flips that you see all of us doing in these videos. Um, you can basically go dead neutral in the air and flip your stick, your pitch or your roll, and you'll just zing around and it's really, really cool. I like mine always on. So if you put your air mode, if you flip the switch, as soon as you arm that quad, the motors will spin. You can leave this off and use it as a mode so you can attach it to a switch on your transmitter, um, uh, which I used to do back in the early days, but now I just I use it on everything, so I don't even mess around with it. Uh, SD card, I can turn that off because this board does not have one. That just records your black box to your SD card um, if you have one. Uh, I know my Omnibus F3 full-size boards all take SD cards. They do not have on board data flash, which is up here. Uh, OSC, on-screen display. You, if you're running a, a, uh, anything that says Omnibus on it, you probably have built-in Betaflight OSD, which is why I use these boards, honestly. They're great stable boards, and I use OSD on everything if I can. Uh, so keep that enabled. Video transmitter, that's so if you have a specific type of brand of uh, FPV transmitter can actually, uh, you can adjust things, change channels and whatnot through Betaflight. I have never honestly done this before, so I don't use it. ESC sensor, this is only for KISS and BL Heli 32s. Again, I don't run KISS and I don't run BL Heli uh, or 32-bit ESC, so I've never used that, so sorry about that. Um, voltage battery or VBAT. This basically onboard VBAT. This pretty much every flight controller has will tell you uh, your low voltage warnings. When their battery starts getting low, you can set these parameters and it'll start beeping when your um, 
battery gets down to a predetermined level. I use this all the time. If you don't run OSD, this is really nice to have. Now, if you're flying two blocks away or something, you ain't gonna hear it, but you know, something's better than none. Current, and I'll show you how to calibrate this real quick. Current meter, eh, most boards don't have it. Some guys use it, some guys don't. I could give a rat's ass what this thing's putting out for amperage. I don't care. If the battery doesn't burst into flames and it keeps flying the way I want it to, I'm only concerned with this. If you want a turbo geek about it, be my guest, play with this. Now, basically how you want to calibrate this is when you plug, let me do this real quick, when you plug a battery into your quad, you will see at the top of the screen, hang on a second. Oop. Okay. You see 8.4 come up here. Notice that? Um, if you change this scale, this number changes. All right, so let's, here's what you need to do. Take your, this is a 2S battery. Take your balance plug or take a voltmeter and test the voltage of the battery that you're plugging into the quad. Let's say it's 8.5. You will bring up, and this is saying 8.4. You can bring up this by one click, hit save and reboot, and when it boots back up, this number up here should be more accurate for you, okay? That's how you dial this in. Very simple to do, um, very simple, and I definitely recommend you do it. Now, for my minis, my micros, minimum cell voltage, I actually put it 2.9, because I beat the hell out of stuff, and then my warning cell, I put 3.3. .3. Here's what happens. This you can just leave alone. Um, it will start beeping at you when this number hits 3.3. .3. Basically, it just, it, that's 3.3 .3 volts per cell. Then, once you hit 2.9, it just drops you out of the sky. So, to save your battery, basically. Um, you could put your minimum cell voltage down to 1.0 or however low it goes and just burn your batteries totally to shit. Um, so, there you go. Uh, definitely worth its weight in gold. I use this all the time. So well, let's go through this real quick. Everything looks good. Now, notice when we change this 8 kilohertz, we haven't changed anything yet. If you go to a different screen right now, you're going to lose all this. You have to save and reboot. But the one thing I want you to take into consideration here is when you change your gyros and your PIDs, keep an eye on that CPU load down here. All right. So right now we're at 15. I'm going to hit save and reboot. Okay, I'm gonna connect. And our CPU is at 38% running an 8.8, which is good. That's full throttle on an F3 controller. You can't go any higher than that, okay? Um, some F3, the not so good chips will only let you run 4.4 uh, or something of that nature, but eh, usually you can't, unless you're really, really good, a whole lot better flyer than me. You're not gonna notice much of a difference, but, um, 38% on an 8.8 with my OSD enabled and everything, I'm happy with that. Because even CPU spikes, I'm not gonna go over 50. Um, I have flown cheaper boards at 50, 55, and not had issues. But that's not saying you can't. So, eh, careful with that. Going back down to here. So that's configuration tab is done. Go down to fail safe. I never touch a thing with Betaflight with fail safe. It is, however, very important for you to test. So here's the deal, remember this, write this down on a sticky note. After you get all of Betaflight set up uh, and you think you're all rock and roll and everything works nice, uh, what you wanna do, leave the props off, plug a battery in, arm this thing, give it a little bit of gas, you know, just literally 5% throttle on your desk. So the thing's spinning around everything, your motors are making noise, then turn off your transmitter, your, your radio transmitter. It should wait about however long you've gotten here, a second or however many seconds you set up. Um, delay for turning off the motors during a fail safe. So one equals point, a tenth of a second. Okay, so 1.0. Um, basically, this thing's going to drop out of the sky. So on your desk, turn off your transmitter. Boom, give it a second, and it is more than a tenth of a second. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, but and you, as long as those props stop. Your fail safe's good. Don't even mess with this. You can have it land. I have always just let it drop. Uh, land does not help you in a 20 mile an hour wind. 
because what it'll do is it'll slowly land, but if it's a 20 mile an hour wind, she's gonna blow away and that's not good math. So uh, you can make it do all sorts of crazy shit. Uh, I just have mine drop out of the sky. It's better to drop a bird and go find it than to wonder where the hell it landed. So just leave fail safe alone, but do test it, okay? Never take it for granted. I've never had one not work, but just always test it. PID tuning, this is where um, everybody's different on PIDs. For my, I run primarily 215, 210, 200 class quads uh, as far as millimeter size, okay? So I have, and 220. So from 220 to 210 maybe, that's my range of quad frames that I use. And I have found for my flying that my PID, and I am not gonna go over this, Joshua Bardwell and all those other cats have gone over this way better and put way more time into it than I would ever want to. Um, for me, I agree with uh, UAV Futures, stock PIDs are good enough. They fly great. I've been no, I tweak the hell out of these on drones using iNav, but iNav is a different firmware. As far as beta flight goes, man, these rock the house for what I do. I run 2300 or 2600 KV motors. I run 20 to 30 amp ESCs. I run omnibus F3s and F4s on 200 to, or 210 to 220 class quads and these PIDs work fine for me. I have never ever had a problem. If I'm running a Y4 configuration or something kind of goofy, I do change these, but standard quads, do whatever you want. I'm just saying, this is how I set them up. Now, for a micro brushless quad, these do change. You will have other issues, um, and that's a whole different topic, and I'm still learning it as I go, but I've got a pretty good formula for putting PIDs in for micro brushless, like 80, 80 to 100 millimeter size frames. RC rate, this is your multiplier. Um, I always, this is just me, I go 1.25 and I go 1.25. One will work just fine. Uh, my buddy goes like 185. I, whatever, dude, you know, it's all what you're used to. If you're watching this video, chances are good you're a beginner anyway. So, I would say keep your RC rate at 100, which is, or one, or 1 1.25, and whatever RC rate you learn on is pretty much what works. So if you watch my buddy fly, who's got, um, shout out to Blackhawk, by the way, if you watch him fly, he's running rates at 185, I believe. I'm running rates at 125, but if you watch us fly, you cannot tell the difference in the, in the flips. Um, it's really a matter of hand muscle training, okay? Uh, muscle memory, we call it in, in the guitar playing world. And uh, so I might hold mine down longer, flip mine down faster, whereas he, he just has a different muscle memory. You watch our quads on video, they look like they're doing the same thing. But if I were to fly his and he were to fly mine, it's a totally different feel. So put this for your cozy. These are all, everything I'm giving you in this is cozy, but it'll work great for freestyle and whatever else. Super rate is a magnifier of your amplifier. It's just whatever. I always run 0.85 on all three. This gives you fast ass yaw, fast ass everything, um, but it's controllable. Uh, th it's just what I do, okay? Uh, RC Expo, eh, this is for people that are, uh, you're a little bit twitchier on the th if you're a thumber or a pincher. Um, maybe you're not as accurate. It gives you a little bit of dead band in the middle. I actually sometimes run a .3. Uh, I learned that from Blue Falcon, God rest his soul. Um, but honestly, I don't notice the difference. Then that's probably just because I'm crap pilot. But whatever. Um, these angle and horizon strength and angle limit for angle uh, limit. I usually set this to 70. Reason being, if I'm gonna fly around the neighborhood and do tests, and I just, usually when I fly in my neighborhood with a bigger quad, like over my house and stuff, I usually fly in angle mode, uh, just lessens the chance of me doing something stupid when I've been drinking and flying. So, uh, but I like to have a good tilt on it and not a lousy 55 degrees. I wanna be able to really haul ass in angle mode. So if you leave this at 35 degrees, um, that, when you pitch forward that or roll right or left, that's as far degree wise as you will be able to go is 35 degrees. So I actually go 70, which I have had go crazy on me because if you've got your wind hitting you just right, and you go to a full 70 degrees, I have had them spin out of the air, but I like to have the potential there. So it's basically horizon without flipping. Um, 
I leave sensitivity alone. I don't even piss around with this. Um, strength, I have been known to change with brushed quads, flying angle around the yard. Um, basically what that means is if you put it 70 degrees and you're going full tilt angle and you let up on your pitch stick at angle strength of 50, it will come back gradually to level. If you put a more aggressive number in here like 70, it will snap back really fast and it's kind of cool, but it's very aggressive and gives you funky prop oscillations and kind of, eh, it's more work than it's worth. I usually just leave it at 50. Um, and I leave this stuff alone. I don't play with that. I leave this stuff alone. I don't play with that. I'm like, again, it's all about getting the birds in the air, flying, being able to have fun and do what you want to do. Um, I, I just don't overcomplicate it. I, I found settings that work great for me and I can semi control them and blah, blah. Um, if you want to delve into this stuff, go for it. Or I can make a video that's more detailed if you want, but there's already stuff out there. Throttle mid. I usually don't change this. Throttle Expo, I usually don't change this on a big quad. Um, I have been known to change the Throttle Expo on um, micros just to control my thrust and stuff like that. But realistically, guys, if you're doing a real quad, eh, don't mess with it. TPA and TPA breakpoint. Um, this is actually your throttle transition for your pitch value PIDs. Um, I understand it, but I don't want to explain it, and it's really, I don't know anybody that even messes with it, so whatever. If you want to know more about it, great. Now, you do have three different profiles. You have a rate profile. I think there's three. Yeah, I haven't saved this one yet. Let's save it. All right, now you've got one through three and one through three you can set up different profiles. So if like, say this is profile one, I know this works. I know I can go out in the parking lot right now in my hotel room, fly this thing like a champ or at least as good as I can. And it'll, it'll fly like a scalded dot. But if I want to experiment, here's what I recommend you do. Set it on profile two, change whatever you want to change your experiments. If it flies like a bag of shit, you can just go back to profile one. It saves your stuff and just hit save and it's loaded profile one. If I go into here, put in profile two and just hit save, I disconnect my quad, uh, I go back into my quad, plug it back in. Connecting. Sometimes it hangs. I connected too quick. Let's do that again. Or it's just fried. Let's try it this way. Sometimes this happens. It's not a perfect world. There we go. multi we blah, blah, blah. Identifier, firmware, omnibus, blah, blah, blah. Go back down to our PIDs. We are still in profile two. So if you want to experiment, ex I would say leave profile one as the one that you know works. And then fuck around with, sorry. Yeah, fuck around with two and three. Don't mess around with your main. Same thing with rates. Rates will change your rate profile. Um, so if you want to keep your PIDs but just play with your rates, you can change this. This will only affect your RC rates and your super rate and this stuff here. Um, your profile will actually change everything, if I remember right. So I usually don't do it much, but I'm pretty sure it does. You can also change this to your OSD beta flight. Um, so anyway, that's everything there. Again, going kind of fast through this. Uh, your receiver, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna do it right now because mine's in my backpack, but if you turn your transmitter on and you have a battery plugged into your quad, all these sliders should move forward and backward and you should see your transmitter functioning everything that you wanna do. Since I run Radio Link S bus, and Radio Link, if I remember right, is kind of a clone of a Futaba, the default AETR1234, works perfect. I don't have to piss around with this. Aileron, elevator, trim, oh, I'm sorry, throttle, and rudder. It's one, two, three, four. What that means is ailerons want channel one, elevators channel two, throttles channel three, rudders channel four. I never hear people explain that, but that it's, it's from the airplane days, okay? Um, I do not use RSSI, so whatever, you're on your own. Um, Fry Sky, oh, okay, maybe I'm wrong. 
Price Guy Futaba. Nope, that is the Futaba protocol. And then if you go down to Spectrum, Grobner, JRs, then they go Throttle, Aileron, Elevator, Rudder, one, two, three, four. So the one, two, three, four is just designating Throttle is one, Aileron's two, blah, you get the idea. Okay, so default. Default is the Futaba. High tech Futaba or default. It's the same thing. Stick minimum, stick center, stick max. Uh, you want your stick minimum. You know, what you want to do basically is if turn on your transmitter. If your throttle minimum's at a thousand, you can put this at a thousand. I usually don't even have to mess with these. Everything nowadays from the technology is pretty decent. Usually want this to be at 1500. So this is just above a thousand, just below 2000 and center. I never, ever, almost never, I can't even remember last time I changed these. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. RC deadband and yaw deadband. Again, what this gives you is your deadband within the neutral zone. So I am not the most accurate person in the world. So I put a deadband of 15 at center. That's what this is. Basically what this means, we all know, well, for mode two flyers, which most of us are, your throttle's on your left hand stick, but so is your yaw. If, you know, if you're going left and right, your throttle's up and down. Sometimes when you're getting excited or, you know, whatever you're doing and you're flying and you might accidentally, when you're trying to push your throttle up, accidentally just barely hit the yaw left. If you have a dead band in here, you're, you're, it basically says ignore anything from zero to 15 pulse counts. Um, I do do this. This one, and this is for all of them. This one's for yaw. So this is your aileron, uh, rudder, and all that crap. And this one's your, your yaw. Um, I like the one on the yaw. This one I don't really care about, but that one on the yaw for sure. 3D throttle. I don't have a 3D machine. Just don't care. Again, that's the whole when your throttle's in the center. Uh, so that's good to have. Auto RC interpolation, you always leave this on auto unless you got some very strange thing going on. Um, and that's really about it for this page. Not very much to do. You know, check your radio. Make sure when you move your right hand stick to the right, the roll goes positive. Make sure when you go left, it goes negative. Pitch forward, this should go positive. Pitch negative should go back. Yeah, you know, you get the idea. Uh, I don't want to get super detailed in this. It's already been 37 minutes, so, and I'm trying to go fast. Auxiliaries are all of your mode switches, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and then if you have your transmitter plugged in, you can spin, you can actually hit your sticks, and you'll see your little toy quadcopter here spin around. Pretty neat. Uh, hit save. Modes, everybody's favorite. This is my radio. Everybody's radio is different, how you set it up. My buddy Ian that I fly with, he's got his all fucked up. I don't know how he flies like that, but He's got his modes, his flight mode switch on the top, and then he's got to hold up one foot and rub a lamp to switch other stuff, and eh, whatever. Um, I have my arm on aux two switch on my radio, and I'm not going to go through radio theory here, but if anybody has any questions, I'll help you out. Um, so when my switch is high, I go over there. When it's low, it's over here. Okay, uh, you can separate these this way. I'm holding down the left mouse button and sliding these guys. All right. Um, or put it in the middle, hold down your right mouse button, and you can slide the whole thing as one unit. I love that. That's what I use for everything. Anti-gravity. with a, This is to help with prop wash and things like that. It works great on larger quads. I, ha I disabled it on some micros. Um, I'm not sure if I did it on purpose or not, but whatever. I leave this on no matter what in aux one position. I just, I want anti-gravity on all the time. This is again my preference. Auxiliary one, or my far right hand switch on my transmitter, that's a three position, is what I use for mode switching. Angle mode, which is self-leveling, which most beginners always want to fly in. I go, I want that to be my first position. Horizon mode, which nobody ever uses usually, uh, automatically defaults. I put that one in second. Same thing as aux one. Notice how they over, well, they don't really overlap, but they line up here. And the super secret mystery of acro mode. If you have nothing set up, acro mode is active. What I mean by that is if you've got a three position switch that's auxiliary one and you don't set any mode up like that, 
Notice no modes are set up. Anti-gravity doesn't count. That's not a mode. Um, your quadcopter will be permanently in acro mode. Does that make sense? No switch. So if I take switch one, up position in my case, it'll light up here. This little light over here will come up here in position one. That'll be self-leveling, rock and roll. If I put it in the middle, that little light toggle is going to be in the middle. It'll go into horizon mode, which is angle plus flipping. It sounds exciting. It sounds better than it is. but And my position all the way down is not assigned, which means acro mode, okay, which is no self-leveling, a little bit more advanced flying. So first position on my switch is going to be angle. Second, which is in the middle, is going to be horizon. And all the way down is acro because there's nothing on it. It's kind of confusing to people that are new to it. Head free, I never use, you shouldn't either. It's bad habits, just don't use it. Fail safe, I don't know why you would use this on a normal racing quad, on a drone you use this all the time for return home, but uh, usually you just hit your disarm switch, which would be this guy up here, and you just turn auxiliary two off and that bird's gonna fall out of the sky. Uh, so I'm not really sure why you would use fail safe switch. Uh, beeper. In my case, I put this on my switch four on my transmitter and I go all the way to the right. So when I flip that switch up, beep, 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 beep. When I switch it down, nothing. So one night when, not if, when you crash and you cannot find your quadcopter, you flip that switch up or down, it will throw your beeper off until further notice. It will just keep beeping and beeping. This is worth its weight in gold, unless you're deaf. Um, so yeah, you definitely want your beeper on some. FPV angle mix, this is killer. It's kind of fun, it's kind of cheating too. Um, I actually put this in auxiliary three. And what, I'm not gonna get in real depth with this, but I'm just gonna hit, basically what this is, I'm gonna hit save here. And I'm gonna go back to configuration. Remember when we were in here and there was the, Camera angle, right here. Configuration tab, camera angle. I said, put whatever your camera angle is right here. Then when you're in modes, basically when you flip that switch that says FPV angle mix, it will automatically tilt your quad when you rotate in yaw or when you rotate on your Z axis. So basically, since your camera angle, let's pretend you're flying flight, you're flying flat. And so your camera is pointing up at the sky, right? If you're going forward with your quad, now your, uh, your camera is parallel with the ground. So we're gonna assume we're flying at 30 degrees. It's parallel with the ground. So, but if you rotate your pitch, it's gonna skew your camera. What FPV angle mix will do is it will automatically adjust your interpolated angle of your quadcopter. So it always looks like you're flying level. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I play with it once in a while. Um, I don't really fly with it on a lot, but it is kind of fun. Uh, throw it on a switch. If you got a switch, play with this shit. It's fun to do. It's what it's all about. Um, OSD switch. This is to turn on and off your OSD, which actually is pretty handy. A lot of people like to have, especially if you're racing through gates and things like that, you like to have the full spectrum in front of you in your goggles so you can see everything that's going on. Uh, so if you flip your switch down, if let's say auxiliary five or whatever, well, you wouldn't want to do that, whatever, um, your OSD, your battery voltage, your uh, craft name, whatever you got on there, disappears. And then every once in a while you can just flip that switch and your OSD comes back into your screen. Kind of cool to have. Um, I don't use it, but I can definitely see its purpose. So that's what that is. So hit save, boom. Everybody's safe. Adjustments. These uh, are a whole different topic. These are for in-flight adjustments and things like that when you want to tweak your P, I, and D um, and all sorts of other stuff that you can set up on your transmitter channels to tweak things. I am not even going to touch this right now. This is a very long video already and there's better people that have done better videos on this than me. So, Same thing with servos. Most people on beta flight, running a racing quad or a freestyle quad, do not run servo stuff or anything of that nature. So you can use this for other things. 
uh, other than servos. But if you're running, I'm going to use the example of a tricopter, um, things like that would that would use a servo on its tail rotor so you can spin and things like that in your yaw axis or your Z. Um, it's, yaw isn't really, you know, anyway, I'm not going to get into semantics, but uh, that I never, ever touched this with a race quad, ever. Um, just ignore it. Motor tab. Motor tab is great. Here's what you do with motor tab. Take the props off your quad. I've got the scars to prove it. Take your props off your quad, plug your battery in, click that. You are now hot, meaning if I raise this up, the master fader, well, in the music world, we call that a fader, uh, the master fader, all four of your motors are going to spin up, okay? Here's what you use this, one of the things you use this for. After you build a quad, okay, remember, our motors are motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. Take note of the direction, okay? That's very important. Um, after you build your quad, you need to see if your motors are going in the right direction. So you enable this, plug the battery into your quad, push up fader one, and that should rotate. Don't go full throttle. That should rotate motor one in the clockwise direction. If it's going counterclockwise and you don't want it to, because you can reverse your props and, and make these go the opposite directions, kids, but that's a whole different thing. Uh, but if you're setting it up for standard uh, and this thing's going counterclockwise instead of clockwise, make note of that because you're going to have to reverse it, either the wires or reverse it in BL Heli. Um, but that's why you do individual faders. Okay, motor two's fine, motor three might be going backwards, motor four is fine, awesome. You also use this page for troubleshooting quite a bit, at least I do. Is it the EA ESC? Is my motor timing stuffed up? Is, you know, whatever little problems, nuances I may be having, um, that's what I use this page for. It's very useful, I use it every time I build a quad, I get everything set up, I put in my beta flight, and I fire up my motors and everything goes pear-shaped. This is where I, the page I go to so I can make note of things to reverse. And when I help people troubleshoot their quads over the phone, via text, via whatever, um, I have them go to this page. You know, my, my quad takes off and instantly flips and hits the driveway and breaks props. Chances are good, your props are on backwards or your motors are going backwards, one of the two. Pretty simple stuff, OSD. On-screen display. I'm not going to get, you can spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I turn the logo off because I know I'm running beta flight. I don't need to see it in my OSD. I instantly, if you're in Europe, you probably run PAL. I run NTSC, which most of us in America do. I do not run metric in my home life. I only run metric in my work life. Uh, so I run imperial or standard. Uh, notice, if you've got anything very close to the edges, a lot of times it gets cut off. So I always keep everything about a space off of the edges. Um, now, the neat thing about Betaflight's OSD is it's real time. So if you plug a battery into your quad right now, throw your goggles on, and you're moving this stuff around like I just did, you can actually see it moving around in your goggles, which is really tits. I mean, that's very cool to do. Um, I'm going to go over the things that I use on OSD, and you can play with anything you want. Be my guest. This, again, this is how I set up a quad. So the only thing I change over here, I make this NTST, this Imperial, this three minutes. I do not use capacity because I don't use uh, uh, amp meter. I do not use RSSI, and I do not use altitude warnings. Okay? You have to have your barometer on for that. Um, I want this clock flying minutes to start flashing when it hits three minutes that way i know oh shit i better come in get close to coming in anyway because my quad's going to go pear-shaped here in a minute um that's very very cool rssi value obviously we'll put up the rssi value i don't use it i use main battery voltage sometimes i'll use a crosshair i usually don't that just puts a nice little crosshair here i don't usually anymore uh, artificial horizon is this, so it tilts with the quad. I don't use that anymore. Um, I do not use horizon sidebars anymore. I do not use on time. I really don't care how long the friggin' thing has been turned on. I care what my voltage is and how long I'm in the air. Because this helps me do battery studies. And not battery studies in the clinical sense, 
battery studies and like, oh, you know what? Most of my batteries, I'm kicking it three and a half minutes, but this one's going south of cheese in like a minute. Uh, yeah, we got we got to shove a spike through this thing's heart and get rid of it, get a new battery, that type of thing. Fly mode, eh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Are you in stabilize, are you in acro, which comes up as air mode usually, or um, horizon? Eh, depends on my mood. I think on micros I do, but usually my big quads, I'm always in acro anyway, so I don't care. Craft name, obviously there's my little roto geek, I can put that on there. Eh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I have been lately just because I've been uh, doing a lot of FPV um, DVR. Um, throttle position, sometimes, believe it or not, I will put the throttle position on there for troubleshooting, uh, like if I, th I think I'm having curve issues with my throttle or something, uh, or my transmitter's funny, I will enable this. Pretty cool. VTX channel, I don't use, which is, that's your transmitter channel. If uh, That works if you're using one that's congruent with beta flight. I don't use a current meter. I don't use milliamp drawn. I don't care. If it's flying, I care. Uh, GPS, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't use any of this other stuff. So basically, my bare bones, you're looking at it. And usually, I do not even put fly mode in. So I'll put my Roto Geek crap, if it's on there, down there. I put my voltage somewhere where it's easy to see. And I put my fly minutes where it's easy to see. That's usually how my gear looks. Okay. Um, and that's how I like it. I don't like to have to look around to see what's going on because um, this starts flashing when it gets down to 3.3 volts. Remember our configuration page, it'll start flashing. Um, this will start flashing once it gets above three minutes, which is very, very nice to have. Um, and then you can also do all the PID changing and everything else through OSD, which like I said, other people have done those re reviews and um, YouTube, I'm not going to darken their doorstep, let them have the fun with that. Um, very, very, very awesome to be able to dial in your quad through the OSD screen, let me tell you. For iNav, um, when I do drones and I'm using iNav firmware, that has been an ass saver because it just makes things so much faster dial in. Fantastic. So hit save, boom, your OSD is saved. Sensors, I don't use any. Uh, well, I mean, you do, but your gyroscope, your accelerometer, you can see if I jiggle this thing, that's what my gyro is doing. All right. If I want to see what my accelerometer is doing, I'm, I'm rotating my quad right now. Now you can see that. Uh, whatever. No big deal. I never use this. Most people don't. Most people use their black box if they're going to get this deep. Tethered logging. I don't know if Solt's ever even done this. I'm skipping that. Tethered logging is a whole different thing. Black box. Watch Joshua Bardwell. He's the he's the geek with that. I almost never use black box unless I got something really squirrely going on. Uh, genuinely, you know what? This is a sport for me in the sense of fun. I don't get paid to do it. I I pay other people to do it. The way I spend money with it, but. Um, it's, it's a sport for me. It's fun. I like to figure this stuff out to my, myself. I am an industrial robotics engineer. I deal enough with parameters and tweaking and dialing and, and troubleshooting things. I'm not going to do it in my spare time. I want my quads to fly good enough for me to have fun with and crash with. And I'm a happy guy. I, it's all about throwing your props on and flying in the air. You know, keep it real. If you want to get that geeky with it, go black box in and do filters. There is one filter I changed, which I'll show you. Um, but I do not, I said that in an earlier video, you know, put your shit on and fly. Don't sit in a room all day long, pissing around with beta flight, pissing around. Oh, well, if I change this filter by a billionth, it makes one less vibration sound in my left prop. Who friggin' cares? Get out there and fly, you know, and seriously. If you're that good of a pilot, which most of the guys that I've seen tweak filters that good, are not that great of pilots. It's because they're in the damn house geeking with Betaflight more than they're flying. Um, hence, says the guy doing this video. Now, CLI. This is extremely useful. I'm going to go over a couple basic functions that you're going to want to know. First thing, version. When you type in version on your buffer line or your input line, type in version, hit enter. Bam! It tells you what board you're running. I don't give a shit about the, the beta flight because I wipe every board I get. It does not matter. It tells you the day that you flashed it and all that stuff. I'm sorry, the year and time and all that good joy. joy. Um, 
I care about my target. If you ever, especially if you're new to the game, or you buy a bunch of flight controllers on sale at Banggood, and then one day you go to use one, you can't remember what it is, the first thing you should do is plug in your flight controller, go to CLI, type in version, and see what it pops up. This is your target for flashing firmware because it gets sketchy. Omnibus is pretty straightforward, but when you get an SP Racing F3, or is it an SP Racing F3 Evo, or, you know, it goes on and on. And I have soft bricked them. Actually, I just did it yesterday or the day before. I flashed one of my microboards as an SP Racing, and it was an SP Racing F3 Evo. Oops. So I had to use my boot button, and it, you know, it took 10 seconds. No big deal. Um, so that's what that's useful for. The other command that's very useful is this, which is dump. Bam. That is your backup. What you want to do with dump, click in the screen, hold down your control key, and hit your A key, copy all, and then right click. Man, my computer's bagging. What's up with that? Um, and right click, copy all of these. Wow, let's eat up. Come on, kids. I don't know why it's not doing this. Copy all of them and then paste them into WordPad. Don't use Notepad. Use WordPad. Um, and that is your complete backup, okay? It, trust me on this when I say, when you go to configure, uh, where was it, setup? And they actually took this away for a while. Clean Flight used to have it, and then they took it out, and then they put it back in, back in the Clean Flight days, uh, back up and restore. This does not back, unless they changed it, it does not back up and restore everything. When you go into CLI and you go into dump, that is the entire system, absolutely everything, okay? So basically what I did, I'm doing this, this video for you on a quad that I actually fly and have dialed in, and I've just totally screwed it up by doing this video, but I backed it up before I did. After this video's done, I'm gonna paste all that crap back in there, bada bing, I'm finished, okay? Um, I don't know why mine's having such an issue. My computer's usually fast as hell, but for some reason, beta flight's being sketchy. Anyhow, so copy this, save it into WordPad, boom, you got a backup. Now, all you've got to do then, go into here, hit paste, and hit enter. For some reason, it's not letting me copy paste. Um, boom, you got your backup restored. And then whenever you type anything in here, or paste anything in here, whatever the case may be, if you want it to save, do not exit the screen, type save. It will reboot and it will save that configuration or whatever you changed. Um, let's see here. And But it, I have done it where I'm doing code in the CLI, which is command line interface. And uh, I thought, oh shit, I can't, you know, I drank too much rum tonight. I can't remember if I changed that or I didn't change that. Just don't save it. Easy as that, you know, you change a bunch of stuff in here, just click out of it. It'll, or type exit or disconnect or whatever, just pull the plug, it won't save it. Now, there's a couple things that I change. Here's one of them. If you type in get beeper, I'm sorry, mistyped get beeper. Uh, beeper inversion on, beeper OD, LED strip visual beeper off, or I think you can also do just beeper. Disabled, beeper, enable. Disabled, none. All right, or was it beeper list? I'm sorry, I'm doing this from memory. Yeah, there it is, beeper list. Um, gyro calibrated, it beeps for all this crap. I, I find it really annoying when I plug in my quad into the USB and the beeper's going off for all sorts of shit, like it's not calibrated or let's say I'm calibrating the battery voltage, then I unplug the battery and it starts beeping like crazy. So here's what I do, I go beeper, negative, on, underscore, USB, enter. Beeper on USB is disabled now. What that does is anytime you are getting power or plugged into the USB port of that board, your beeper crap is disabled. Very, very cool. Uh, when my wife's trying to get the girls to sleep or I'm just not in the mood to hear this shit, I, on all my quads, I honestly, I do this. Um, you know, I don't need to hear the damn beeper when I'm plugged into the computer, <laughs> okay? As soon as you unplug it, everything works. Um, but that's what I do. And if you, you can always just leave out the negative symbol and it turns back on. 
pretty straightforward. The other thing that I do do on full size quads and sometimes micros is I'll say get D term or just get D. And it gives you all this stuff. And I will go into, scroll back up and you look is I change a couple, one filter. I learned this trick from Project Blue Falcon, God rest his soul. He did a great video on how to change certain um, D-term filters on the quad to make it fly better and to reduce uh, prop wash, I believe. Um, I don't get that geeky with it, but I do change one of them. So if you type in get D, which is, stands for D-term, uh, is this thing gonna let me copy yet? Nope, ah, I don't know, computer's messed up, anyhow. You want to look for something that says buy quad. Start scrolling up, and it should be about halfway through, if I remember right. There it is. D low pass type buy quad. I changed this to PT1. That is off of Project Blue Falcon, and he's right. It does help in performance, smooths it out, and it does not overheat your motors or anything like that. Excuse me. Um, so what you can do, and I can't do it for you right now, uh, I highlight this whole thing to there, and I copy it, copy. Then I type set, oops, and then right click paste, and it'll automatically put all this in, and I back up, I delete by quad, and I put in PT1. So I'm just going to type it in. So set D underscore low pass, um, underscore type, space, equals space, PT1, enter. And it'll say this. Then you hit save, bada bing, it saves it. Everything's good with the world. Um, and he said in his video, and he's right, you should fly it for 20 seconds or so, I think he said 15, and make sure your motors aren't getting hot and all that crap. I have never had a motor overheat or anything like that just from changing the low pass type to PT1. Now he he further changes um, other filters, which I did not go over, um, and then test them and test them and test them until he gets a really tight and dialed. Um, I, I have had him get warm. Uh, to me, it's not worth it. I don't notice as much difference. I fly, I live in the Midwest. I fly in a shit ton of wind all the time. I wouldn't know it if it hit me in the head. So he's a better pilot, was a better pilot than me anyway. God bless him. So bada bang. That's it, that's all I do. I change my USB uh, so my beeper doesn't go off when I'm plugged in, and I change my D low pass type filter to a PT1. And then I hit save and I'm done. Save, and it'll reboot, and now you're set. Go plug it in, arm it, see if it flies, and it should be copacetic. Now, if you're new to this, a lot of this probably was overwhelming. Um, Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's like, hey, shit, that was easy, dude. Uh, I hope it was. If you have any questions on it, please let me know. Uh, it Again, not it's not hard. Once you do it 300 times, trust me, usually the hardest part when I've helped people through this, um, like my buddy Ian had problems with his board connecting um, and other things of that nature, uh, that's the hardest part. Once you get the drivers loaded on your system, um, then you're rock and roll. The one thing I did not go over, and I apologize, I should have done this in the beginning of the video and I'm too lazy to re-edit it. Um, basically, when we went into our configuration and I told you your board alignment, remember? After your board alignment is copacetic, you think you've got it right. Like if you rotated that board to the right 90 degrees or to the left 90 degrees or 180 degrees, whatever, and you hit save and reboot and all that crap, go back to your setup and make sure when you tilt that little dude forward, the nose goes down, and you tilt to the right, it goes to the right. For instance, if I go into configuration, and I go negative 90, because there's gonna be some naysayers out there that say this does not work, <laughs> but it does. Uh, you do not have to put positive 270, that's just nerdier than me, which is pretty hard to do. Um, now, when I tilt my bird forward, Look what happens. I'm pitching my nose down. I tilt to the right, it goes down. That's not good. So, if you're not sure which way you've tilted your board, keep playing with this until you get it right. So, zero for me. Save and reboot. Then, 
All right. Yeah, that's annoying. Bear with me. Then what you want to do, connect up. Ba -ba -bum -bum -ba -bum. And then make sure it's copacetic, it is. Now, make sure you're on a decently leveled surface and then hit calibrate accelerometer. There you go. Um, if you do not calibrate, like if I hit calibrate accelerometer right here, I got my, my quad at a 35 degree angle or whatever it is. Um, and I'm still holding my quad at an angle. You can't see it, obviously. Now I go level physically with my quad in real space. Look how far off it is. And that bitch is going to drift, son. It's going to go just out to Poland, right? So make sure you're level. Calibrator out. Bada bang. Then, if it still drifts in space a little bit, not a lot of it, a little bit, then you can go into this tweaking that we did, remember? Um, very straightforward to do, not hard. Um, and again, I might fly, I got a pretty big hotel room tonight, I might fly in here and tear some stuff up. Um, so I'll check my drift on my little ones just for something to do. But other than that, uh, it's all good. It really is. So if you want to see a, a demo of LEDs, how to set those up in Betaflight, because I do use those sometimes, um, or you want to see uh, any more of the adjustments or filters and things like that, I know how to do all that stuff. I just choose not to. Or I can go into OSD more in depth. Um, I'll help anybody that wants a hand with this. Uh, it's a great tool. I have built and destroyed well over 100 quads, probably two or 300 quads. Um, and, you know, Betaflight, when I first got into it, I started with Clean Flight. Actually, I started with APM, with Mission Planner, building drones. Then I started with Clean Flight, with race quads, and then Clean Flight, because Clean Flight used to be better than Betaflight. Then Clean Flight kind of got left alone, and Betaflight just got freaking awesome. And, uh, and I think I might have uh, tried race flight once, but I don't think I did. I know I played with it. And then I use iNav a lot. I've built, I've got four iNav drones with GPS and return to home and all that. Um, and that one's way more complex than this. So if anybody wants to see a little tutorial on how to build a drone with iNav, please let me know. I'll be happy to run through that. Um, and I can always, I see a lot of guys that do these beta flight gigs, they will, and yes, I'm rambling, they will go, okay, here's the ports tab, they'll do a video. Here's the configuration tab, they'll do a video. Here's the fail safe. Eh, I know this has been an hour and 10 minutes, whatever. You know, if you want to watch it, rock and roll. If not, whatever, you didn't pay for it. So, um, but it should be a pretty basic walkthrough. Everything I did here will get you flying level and accurately and you will have a ball with it yeah is it mr steel perfect dialed in off the skin of a gnat's ass no <laughs> probably not um but i've had compliments on how locked in and dialed in my quads are in some of my videos with my flips and things and it's not because i'm a good pilot we all know that um like my a100 i built the other day that thing when you just do a flip man it's just torque it just stops and it's perfect and it's it floats in the air. It's a beautiful thing. Um, that's what this will give you. Uh, stock PIDs on a real race quad or normal size from a 250 down to a 180. Everything I just did here will work for you. If you're going from a 150 down, I've got different PID settings for those. And uh, they work at least as a really good starting point. And with most of us, starting points are where we just stick. You know, um, and I agree with Stu from UAV Futures. He says, you know, stock beta flight's good enough for him. And that dude's pinging gates and throwing darts. And, you know, he's doing awesome. He's much better pilot than I am. And uh, if stock beta flights are good enough for that cat, they're good enough for me. So anyway, please, if you have any questions, I'm sorry this is so freaking long. Uh, I'm long winded and, you know, that's how it is. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be glad to help you out or to clarify anything I might have missed or gone over too quickly. So until then, keep the shiny side up. Take care. Bye-bye.